Hello and welcome back to the Great Cricketers World Cup Morning Glory as the fireworks go off, Pezza, over the stadium, which is a completely normal thing to happen after Game 6 for each team of the ICC World Cup. The smiles of Shami, the roar of Arat, the whiskey of Shastri, the happiness of the big bear, Rohit Sharma, was all there for everyone to see. This is a win against England. This was victory against the defending champion slash literal last place in the table, as Sanjay Mandraka said on commentary, against all odds. That man needs a new bookie. Shami outstanding, Rohit batting on a different surface, chaos in the stands, England not much better than woeful. Nothing could possibly make India happy happier than absolutely dominating and demolishing their old oppressors, England. India 2, 29 for 9. Defeat England by 100 of your cricket runs. Don't call it Bombay. Don't call it Madras. <laughs> don't call it United Provinces. Call it what it was, Pezza. A fucking massacre in luck now because that is what it was. If you are new to TGC, hey, why not click that subscribe button? It's a massive channel on the channel this week. We're doing, uh, obviously, this game. We've got Pakistan, Bangladesh, India, Sri Lanka, New Zealand, Pakistan, Australia, England. And then by the time we get to next week, it is India, South Africa. That looks pretty tasty. Also, the main podcast coming out tomorrow. Our guest this week, you'll know who it is. Um... So subscribe there for that. There's also Adam Zampa's chat we had last week. Wasted Saturday. So much happening on the channel during this World Cup. If you've enjoyed TJC's coverage so far, hit the like button. But if you are new, hit that subscribe button. Uh, Pezza, that was a demolition against England by India. Mate, everything is coming up India. Is it? Uh, th this, this nation looks every inch mm. winners yeah. of the 2023. What we wouldn't give for a few extra inches. World Cup. Well, India have no more to give because they are no more deep. Inches. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Every inch. Yeah. World Cup winners. Yeah. Two stars from overnight. We're going to get to row here. The Melbourne stars. Yeah, that we had uh we had Tess and yeah, uh, yeah, Kimi Kim, on the yeah, show. Yeah, well, yeah. join the channel, subscribe. Yeah. Um <laughs> Sky and Shammy are their subs. Yeah. Yeah. Backup Mo, players. Mo Shammy is one of the great World Cup performers in the history of the code. Yeah. Yeah. Overnight, they had a tough situation to recover from on a slow, two-paced, mm -hmm. turgid, mm. in my words, deck. Mm -hmm. Apologies to the curator and his family. <laughs> he had a good run. He had a good run. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, this, this uh, I mean... And everything around it, the crowd, incredible, yeah. the silence at any England success. Yes. Fantastic. All bit temporary. Very yeah. loud. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Muhammad Kaif looking fucking awesome. Yep. Coming out into the field. Yep. Suresh Rayner as well. Yep. It, it's, it, it's coming up. Everything's mm. coming up, India. And I know people listening to this going, I know what you're doing there, Pezza. And yeah, I am doing that. Because <laughs> we've got to find something. Yeah. There's, there are no holes in this side. Something yep. goes wrong, someone else will recover it. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to getting on to England later. Yeah. Um, shall we get to the first thing? Well, I just enjoyed you sucking off Suresh Rayner. Haven't seen him look this good since those booking.com ads, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I do. Uh, TGC is brought to you by cricket.com. You can download the cricket.com app from the App Store. You can also subscribe to their channel. Go into the search bar then go cricket.com forward slash TV to get around them as they have done for TGC during this World Cup. So thanks to booking, <laughs> thanks oh, to cricket.com. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it didn't, quite, it didn't quite work out. First of the three things, uh, Rohit gives India something. Uh, 87 off, where's me score cut, 87 off, 101, 10 fours, three sixes. Uh, next top score was Sky with 49. He was crucial. And then Kale Rahul with 39. But uh, spot a bother for India early on. They were three for 40, 40 for three. Uh, thanks to uh, Chris Wokes being able to land it for the first time in a little while. But uh, but Rohit took down David Willey early on. Willey came back and actually finished quite well with three for 45. Um, but, uh, but Rohit at times looked like he was the only one batting on a surface of, of any sort of uh, repute. It's um, it's becoming abundantly clear that this tournament is about the bear. It's the bear um, tournament? On a, on a slow, two-paced, turgid thing yeah. uh, that had the better of most else mm. who batted. Um, he, he was India's Berbatov. Mm -hmm. All silk. 
Mm. All languidity, mm. often bludgeoning mm. when he needed to. Mm-hmm. It says something about the man's form mm. that on this deck, when he saw his friends perish, one for 20, two for 20, three for 40, he played within himself cautiously, tentatively, striking at 87. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, he is seeing them like absolute beach balls at the moment. The man has so much time. Mm. It is a slow deck. Mark Wood's bowling to him. Rohit's got six shots before he decides to play it. Yeah. Uh, he'd be an absolute nightmare to bowl to. He's seen them so well. You know, in Australia, we say beach balls. Yeah. Have you ever heard of spheering? No. Have you ever heard of zorbing? Uh, yeah, or I orbing? have. Yes, I Where have. Where humans yes. get inside yes. those big plastic balls, yes. roll down hills or get um, horned by bulls. Yeah, that's how you and I met. Indeed. <laughs> it's, he ain't seen beach balls. He's zorbing. He's zorbing. He, he's got the orb out. It's, yep. it, he's, he's sphering. Yeah. That, he is on absolute fire. Now, has he gone too early? Yeah, well, yes, he clear, clearly. As an Australian with a team somewhat playing mm. in the tournament with there playing, or thereabouts. playing some patchy cricket that yeah. c- could go either way. Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. Rohit may have gone too early. But, but the guy is th- – this is, this is about Rohit. The you, whole you tournament's can, about Rohit? Oh, this, is, this is his tournament. So, it's very clear. So before the tournament started, I said that uh, Shubman Gill, I thought he was going to be – I thought there was going to be a breakout. So he doesn't need a breakout tournament. He's already broken out. Not mm. his skin. His skin looks skin no, skin skin no, no breakouts. Yeah, no breakouts. He's clear so. How did he do it? Yeah. Um, what is that, Reiki? They're probably pretty bad. <laughs> um, but his batting partner, Rohit Sharma, has just completely dominated the tournament so far. Um, well, <clears throat> actually, all the leading run scorers are basically openers. Quentin the Cox done so well. David mm. Warner's done really well as well, of course. But Rohit Sharma, he played one shot last night. It was against Liam Livingston. It's a fairly innocuous boundary that was scored. Liam Livingston bowling in the middle overs. Mm. And, uh, and there was a deep square leg and a, and a long on. Uh, Mid wicket was inside the circle, and he just came down the wicket, just just sort of just skipped down and just sort of corrects caress this ball over mid wicket's head for four against the spin on a slow turning deck, as we saw later with Kuldeep Yadav's ball to Josh Butler, which oh. was fucking unbelievable. Oh. Um, so like on a slow turning deck to to use your feet like that and just uh, it wasn't like an aggressive flick, it wasn't a drive, it was just like middle of the bat. Poetry in motion, silk, silk road kind of gear, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and just and just placed it over to the leg side for four. Innocuous moment, but it, it just that kind of shot you don't play unless you're in the most sublime of sublime touch. It's really difficult to communicate what level of skill it would take to show the amount of time Rohit Sharma has. Mm. You know, he was it was only two months ago. He's uh, you know, his beep test times were getting questioned. <laughs> Thank God he didn't play for the South African women's team. <laughs> it's true. He wouldn't get a run. <laughs> he <Niche>. wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, he uh, – it, it's fun. it all looks so slow and in flow, but the reality is compared to all the other yeah. bats who, um, you know, for whom balls will go past them, uh, mm. he just is – so quick, he just, he's it's cat like reflex stuff, yeah. From Rohit, yeah. Uh, it's um, he, he's just in unbelievable touch. There, there just there might have been a chick in the armor in this innings because England, England bowled up, England bowled pretty well. Okay, uh, they, top, were, yeah. they were four for 130 when KL Rahul was dismissed. Then Surya mm. Yadav, is he then that was, scored, a good, that was a good partnership. He then scored 49 of 47, uh, hitting at 104. Uh, and then it was uh, it was five for 164 when Rohit was out, six for 180. And you're thinking, okay. Well, we, we got Mo Shami batting at eight. It's a, it is a long tail. Finally, we get to see. We're going to have a look at it. They still get the score to 229 for nine. Josh Butler said at the innings break, he thought, well, you know, given how wet it turned out to be, chasing 230, he thought, we're right in this. And that's why I'm going to say good morning to you, India. It's time for cricket.com's stat dog. Tony or Rogan? Indeed. 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 Not yet. Someone's listening to this for the first time. Yeah. <laughs> we just play this before we uh, yeah. offer you some statistics on the game. There it is. My record is gold, man. Yeah. 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 These stats are going to fucking knock your socks off here. England in their last three innings, thanks to cricket.com. 129 all out versus India in 34.5 overs. 156 all out against Sri Lanka, 33.2 overs. 170 all out against South Africa, 22 overs. In none of their last three innings have they scored more than 200 runs. In fact, more than 170 runs or batted 
35 plus overs. In ODI World Cup since 1999, before this edition, England had never lost four wickets inside the first 10 overs. Mm. This edition alone, they've already suffered that dreaded fate twice against South Africa. Then, of course, today. England's worst start in a, po- in a power play in ODI World Cup history was today. Their second worst was against South Africa in Mumbai, a couple, uh, when, whenever that game was. 40 for four they were after 10 overs, 67 for four against that South Africa game. Power play woes for Joe Root. This one is unbelievable. Joe Root in the first 10 overs in ODIs since the World Cup in 2019, they've won it. 18 innings, 50 runs, 11 times dismissed, averaging 4.5 at a strike rate of 37.9. He gets out every 12 balls in the power play in 18 innings since the last World Cup. This was the second biggest winning margin of runs while defending 230 or less. In a World Cup. A little mm. bit too many caveats there for me, mm. cricket.com, but I appreciate the stat dog. Basically, they, like they make 230 and win by 100. Yeah. The 100. That was that was the second biggest margin of win ever, 230 or less. Yeah, too many yeah. caveats. Sorry, cricket.com. This is, this is very stat dog, woof, woof. First World Cup <laughs> duck. <laughs> I was just thinking that. Yeah. yeah ODIs and T10. T, t, sorry. First World Cup duck in either ODIs or T20s for Virat Kohli, Joe Root, and Ben Stokes. In an ODI World Cup game, this was the first time both number three batted suffered a duck. That's very niche cricket.com. Mm. In a World Cup game, this was the first innings in which both England's number three and number four suffered a duck. Again, too niche yeah. for me. Okay, most four-wicket hauls in World Cups. Most Shammy, six. Yeah. Stark, six. Imran Tahir, five. Most four plus wicket hauls in ODIs for India. Number one, going past Ajitagaka. Most Shammy with 13, uh, 10 fourfers, three fifers. Most international runs for India. Rohit Sharma now goes to number five. He joins Sachin Virat, Dravid, Surav. And then Rohit is 400 runs. How far runs. is he behind uh, Surah? 400 and, uh, no, 390. Dada. Okay, he did that in three games. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Uh, once again, another game for India, dripping in stats. So oh, no. the second thing, England get fucking rolled again. <laughs> yeah, it's another sign of uh, India's success as well. Like it's a... You know, it's a different style of victory. They recover from a difficult start mm. on a difficult deck. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> you just mentioned before that partnership with K. Rahul was good. You, you felt like such as India's momentum and dominant, dominance, like in- England needed to actually continue to go through them for the entire first innings to give themselves even a chance. And you yeah. still knew that this Indian bowling attack, which I think is great and will be regarded as great, down the track. It's the only time we're allowed to call greatness after it's dead, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we're we're going to come out breathing fire. I- England actually hit a couple of boundaries to kick things off. Yeah. Uh, just never heard an eerie silence. 30, uh, 30 for none with Bear uh, Was it 30 for none? 30 for none. Shit, and then they were four for 40. Yes. So basically just, yeah. In, in, Hard to know where they lost the game. <laughs> but I, th- I think Milan is to blame. They must get rid they of him. They must get rid of him, how yeah. can How can the guy who's the only guy who scored 100 in the World Cup for selection the so It's just ridiculous. Yeah. They're it's in ridiculous. the semis. Yeah. Jason Roy, bring him in. Yeah, he's, he's semis. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah, they, yeah, they, they, they can just get this momentum going yeah. as well. Once one goes and the crowd gets behind them, it's just so hard to. It's very difficult to imagine. Yeah. Uh, how a team in that situation with the silence that envelops you every time you succeed. Yeah. Like, sort of um, procession processions their way to victory. Yeah. It just it's just hard, and everyone's just fired up and coming in and wants to kill you. <laughs> Have you have you ever have you ever watched a movie and someone in the house has accidentally pressed mute, <laughs> but, but then you you aren't aware until about yeah. halfway through and people you see people talking again. It's a bit like <laughs> that when you're watching fucking some, something something bad yeah. happens against yeah. India and it's like what happened? Hey, yeah, so, yeah. Has, 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 has the dog done <laughs> yeah, something? That's right. Just press mute. Um, what about uh, what about Joe Root being out first ball from Boomer? Yeah. I hope Boomer's burns are okay on his elbows because he's obviously wearing the, the compression bandages. He must be doing a that couple because, of those bowlers where um, yeah. yeah um, Compression bandages yeah, over just the old a, elbows yeah. there, which burns victims use. So yeah. I hope he hasn't experienced yeah. the burn. I hope he's okay in the household. Yeah, yeah. indeed. Um, so Joe Root gets out first ball, shuffles across, it hits him in front of all three, and then has like this incredulous look towards Rod Tucker being like, how the fuck is that out? I'm very con- I'm, I must have missed something there because yeah. that was like one of the most plumb things you'll ever see. Yeah. Rod, Rod Tucker looked confused. Rod at, Tucker looked confused. At Joe Root being yeah. confused. And, and Tuck does not express much emotion <laughs> really where he stands. No, indeed. Uh, nip to his mates. Um, 
little nip, little nip tight joke. There. Yeah, it's yeah it's clarify, clarify. That. It's a lot. Of <laughs> what that means. <laughs> hey, I thought Ben Stokes batted well uh, for a ten ball duck. Uh, beaten all ends up by Mo Shami several times, and they thought, you know what? The only way I can get through this chasing two thirty is uh, back away and sort of get the bat roundabout and sort of waft it. Uh, just sort of waft it around, get cleaned up. Yeah. Some, um, someone please screenshot that, send it through. Got a good one today. Yeah, classic, that kind of stuff. Classic of the genre. Exactly. Uh, so then it was left to uh, the captain, Josh Butler, to do something. He's had 95 runs before this innings in the tournament. He scored 43 in the first game, so it has been a lean run. He scored 10 off 23 before getting that absolute seed from Cool Deep. By this stage, the game is over. But, I mean, Mo Shami took four for 22. This spell of bowling. So he had... Who did he have in a row? He had Stokes and then was it Moeen? Was that, was that what happened? Or was it Bairstow? And, no, I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting myself confused, but he was on a hat trick at some point. You want him two chance. Just say a name and he yeah. probably got him. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that's right. Graham Went Gooch. 2.5. Um, so uh, that spell of buying from Shami, who um, has for some reason been out of the side. Well, I guess it's just a balance thing. And I guess without Hardik there, um, they've, they've changed the structure of their side. But um, – Fuck you, me, he you was You know good. they could do it in several ways and it probably wouldn't make a difference. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Mm. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, I mean, it was it was really all over very early. They were four for 39, five for 52, six for 81, England. Uh, when Wokes was out, it was seven for 98. Mm, party time. Exactly. Uh, and uh, it was all pretty insipid. Uh, is there anything else you want to talk about the collapse itself? Or do you uh, want to get to no, the- roll it into like, what's up with England? Yeah, I yeah. mean, Mo Shami tore him up. Um, Boomer is absolutely unplayable. Boomer, Boomer is the best bowler in the world by, I know by if, daylight. I don't know if I've ever seen him bowl this well. I mean, I, I, obviously, I, I well, obviously have not seen him bowl every single spell, but like in, in white ball cricket, for MI, for India and T20s, I, I don't think I've ever seen fair this, play. this fair level. Fair play to all of them, yeah. you know. I, I was saying to you off air, when England had their good start, again, on a difficult wicket, both sides got a bat on it, etc. But still, we saw India three for 40, 43. Uh, you thought, oh, yeah, you know, there have been times when Indian players have a certain fragility sitting underneath and you and yeah. or and they're out of form and it's not clicking for them, etc. Yeah. You know, they do have bad form in them, but not now. Like not right now. That all of mm. they are all peaking. Whatever's happening in their environment, mm. it's all laddering up to each of them playing exceptional cricket. And yeah. even when the guys come off the bench, uh, they're ready to go and they grab their opportunity with both hands. I mean, it, it is th- these. This is the anatomy of a side that simply cannot lose. Oh, it's just they must win. They've, from they've here. taken they've taken ecstasy tablets at yeah. the right time at the music festival. Yeah, their favorite bands on yeah. stage, just waiting for the drop. Yep. and then they are just Bang. peaking at the and right you get time. That particular Utopia. tingle right through your body that I hear about. <laughs> And you just love everybody. I've read about it in books. That's where it's going. That's where it's going. Let's go to the, the third thing. So what's what's up with England now? Many people would have seen Owen Morgan's comments about well, there must be something wrong in the dressing room. What mm. a wonderful position he's in at the moment yeah. as a World Cup winning captain. Revolutionised the side mm. since the 2015 World Cup. They changed the game in white ball cricket. What they did in 2019, though, actually kind of playing shit in that World Cup, though, getting the job done just about. Um, he his his legacy is is fortified, you know, and so he is now in a position to be a commentator, being like watching this absolute calamity of a of a of a series for them because the World Cup's just a series uh, of them being bottom of the table after uh, six games, thinking like. Wouldn't have happened under my watch. Well, <laughs> it is hard to divorce it from that. You do, you do wonder. One does wonder. One does one wonder. Does. Not necessarily me, yeah. but one. One. One wonders. The woman. One Antonio Samaran. <laughs> that, that's niche. Yeah. That's one for the kids out there. Uh, with a, you know, th- this is a guy that would have access to the dressing room and I presume, mm. what's this, fifth loss or something from them? Yes. Uh would have had an opportunity to figure out if something was happening yes. in the sheds. Yes. Uh, has concluded that the team playing with the style that was essentially his blueprint. Yes. Could only fail mm. due to something being wrong in the dressing room. Yeah. You know, yeah. it couldn't possibly be with the way that they played or the, um, you know, the currency of, of that style now sure. or anything. It must mean. They've gone badly because there's a personality issue mm. happening inside the sheds that he is simply not privy to. Yes. Alex Hales is playing, I'm pretty sure. Mm. <laughs> um, which I understand. Did you say this has um, via both Chris Works and Matthew Mott been yeah. sort of categorically refuted? Yes. Yes. yes that's right. That's uh, right. I mean, it's, I mean, they, the way they batted, 
they're on the plane. They're, they they are so out of this competition. I mean, they they are of yeah. course technically and yet they're not, and yet they're not, and yet they're not. And yet they're um, not. So if they win all their games, New Zealand lose all of theirs, and I guess I guess if Australia lose all theirs as well, because Australia is currently fourth. A couple of things need to happen. Yeah, then then officially they will. Um, they are not out until mm. yeah, um, but uh, yeah, I mean, just the way like Stokes, for instance, duck that shot. I mean, that is fucking dreadful. I mean, I, I've not, I've actually not seen the criticism of it. Perhaps, it, perhaps they might exist out there. Many people have been saying, well, about a couple of games ago, Josh Butler got to go. Stokes has got to be captain. Got to say, I mean, there are, there are a number of leaders in that dressing room. Ben Stokes being one of them. In that situation, he was, he, he was beaten a couple of times by Mo Shammy. And then to play that shot with so much of the game left. Whew, come on, man. That's... That's that's that ain't great, but that that to me speaks of some sort of mentality issue in the dressing room. But they're they're fucking they're mentally gone. Yeah, I mean, I think we've mentioned this on the show before. I um I think there a, a lot of teams have been challenged at the back end of the year to um galvanize themselves for a, for a big push for the World Cup, yep. rightly or wrongly. Uh, I've got no doubt that the England team, its squad, and not all of them play test cricket and stuff like that. They do separate it a little bit, um, mm. you know, have uh, probably been in that category where they're like, we're going to really have to draw on some reserves of energy to get ourselves up for this, just mm. like other teams have as well. Yeah. Uh, there's no doubt that like that group of players, when they are playing at the full expression of their talent, is among the top four teams Still, in the world. Everybody yeah. had them in the semifinals. 100%. Every single pundit worth its salt, such as the respect that everybody affords that side. Now, for, for them to have produced what they've produced, yeah. to be fucking like um, rock bottom. They, 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 they genuinely have been the worst team in the club. Yeah, to be yeah. rock bottom of yeah. the table, to throw up what they have. Yeah. Um, now, obviously, playing against India, you can get done. By yes, them. Yeah, of course, gets of course. Done. Everyone has. Yeah. Um, but for the pattern to reproduce itself over and over and over so that these aren't aberrations that they fix. Right. It's actually now this is the state of play. Mm. I understand why Morgan says, well, there's, there's obviously there's something, something is askew. Now I, I wonder um, whether, uh, and I'm conscious that Australia is playing England in a couple of days time and England aren't out of the tournament, mm. but like, and noting Stokes as dismissal, I'm looking at a team that's been humbled like mm. the, the, the nature of their losses mm. uh, and the um, approach that they've taken to the World Cup in a tough situation where they've played a lot of cricket, just yep. as Australia has or whatever, yep. um, to me is symptomatic of a side that thought we can cobble enough together to get ourselves deep into the tournament yep. and we have a style of play that is unmatched. I mean, yep. it is – and then we saw how um, they how, – how do you say this? The um, – the self-regard that a lot of England players right now in its current um, regime yep. are able to confect them for themselves amid mediocrity across different formats, to me, is emblematic of a um, that real nexus of like arrogance and delusion. Mm. And sometimes that arrogance works brilliantly for you. Never been a pro sports person, I'm sure it's very helpful. Yeah, but. Sometimes the emperor has no clothes too, and it's a castle built on sand. Yeah. You know, they've gone into India. There's some tough conditions there. Other teams have drawn on some reserves of energy, have come ready to play. Yep. And it looks like England have been like, well, you've got a choice to actually fucking dig in here and wrestle your way out of this, or you can just face 10 balls like Stokes did. It's too hard and just fucking try and slug with your head looking up to heaven. The, uh, the, I, I just think that it's emblematic of a little bit of arrogance that underpins the way they're playing their yes, cricket. Yes. Uh, and I think it shows in the results, you know. Yes. But, they, the narrative of this of England cricket as a whole their white ball team and red ball team are actually quite different but I can foresee something happening where like the narrative is going to be they haven't held the ashes for 10 years they have put up one of the worst displays in a world cup in their history um, they're playing India in a five test series that in January and February they're going to get absolutely fucking pumped you know what wickets are, what the wickets going to be like there they don't have the cattle to produce good results there they're going to get pumped mm. there and all of a sudden you head into the World Cup for the T20 World Cup midway through next year and England cricket's probably going to be in some sort of dilemma mm. where they're worrying about the 100, what's the relevance of that, what's their test program looking like, who the white ball plays, this is an mm. ageing team. But so it's hard to divorce that idea whilst at the same time this white ball team that's basically it's basically the same, well, it's a very similar team to 2019, what they did and the memories they gave their fans for – uh, the best part, well, they won two World Cups. Mm. It's pretty fucking good. Great memories for the fans there. 
But I suspect the narrative is going to change given how insipid this performance has been coupled with, uh, was the Ashes a good result? Mm. Probably not, you know? Why does winning the last World Cup give you the next one off? You know what I mean? Like, I mean, Australia did the same thing in 2019 but yep. cobbled their way to a semi. Yeah. You know, it's the, same, it's the yeah. same shit. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. You say white ball, red ball team's different. I agree, like, in terms of the actual players, but they've made a, they've made a, um, a really clear effort, and I've um, praised it. I think it's good to um, – to align the mentality around all of it as well. I mean, mm. the way they're playing, te- like the red ball game has, has actually come into line with how they're doing white ball yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so whatever yeah. those, and, and you know, there are some players that cross over between both as well, mm. some very senior players. And uh, I don't know. I, I, I think that it is revealing of some kind of- um, Hubris? Yeah, hubris and uh, humility that may be good for them. Right. As a result of this. Right. right. Hashtag Ask TGC. Get your hashtag Ask TGC into the comments below and we'll answer it in the next video. Uh, if it's any good, that is. Uh, if it's shit, we probably won't. Um, but uh, when is the next game? It's, uh, the next game we are doing is uh, Pakistan and Bangladesh, I think it is. I haven't got the, I haven't got the fixtures in front of me, whenever that game is. Um, anyway, uh, hashtag Ask TGC comes in from Krishfa, uh, Krishna. Madhavan, uh, just was scrolling through Twitter and saw Bharat Sundaraisen's tweet mentioning Perry's demise, Matthew Perry. Sorry, but I initially thought it was you. Then Googled Matthew Perry name only to realise it was not you. Sorry for that. Hope you're good and wish you a long life ahead. Well, that's nice. I mean, firstly, I think there's probably a kind spirit within that saying, I, I thought you were dead and I'm sad because you got the same last name same as name. Matthew Perry. Yeah. Uh, firstly, RIP Matthew Perry as well. 100%. Similar part of, of, you know, my childhood, watched all the friends. I know you did as well. Yep. Um, and uh, thought he was awesome. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, was, I was genuinely sad yesterday. I, mm. I really reflected on it. Yeah, because it was just mm. a massive show, one of my favourite shows. Mm. Watched every episode dozens of times. Mm. Uh, yeah, sorry, yeah. No, that's all right. Um, so thank you for um, noting that you would have been upset if I was dead. Uh, I'm not for now, you know. Touching old, touching, touching some wood there, but I suppose, um, you know, life, life's fragile. We can all go any any time and just try and make the most of it. Appreciate all the comments uh, underneath below. Also appreciate the comments uh, for Wasted Saturdays, asking why Jade's just buying at a certain point in the game, and just generally how come it's not Saturday where we are when that video comes out. So mm. okay, no, so okay, that. right. Well, we're on Wasted Saturdays quickly. If you do like the show, a couple yeah. of things. Wasted Saturdays refers to the day that we play cricket, Saturday. Yeah. That it's a Saturday wasted. It's yeah. not about the publishing day of the show. Yes. Secondly, we conceived of this show four or five years ago, and it was not a result of what Tan may say on the show <laughs> in any way. Um, in any way, I'd never thought um, about it. Yeah. But, but please continue. To comment that in fact comment it more um yeah, now just, that just i've said that algorithm yeah. yeah just to say stuff also let us know what to deal with who's the guy who bats for new zealand it's a very similar name uh, to like some of the indian players the, uh, so the, the, the young left hander the young left hander yeah, yeah 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 i think he's got some indian lineage as yeah. well um did he actually bring out the trophy a couple of times in some of these games? he was commentating yeah. i think yeah i might get those confused uh, i don't know that's, that's yeah. a lot of, that's yeah. the comments Hey, well done, India. Hey, well. Awesome. Hey. Going very well. Can't see India losing a game. If you see India losing a game ever again, don't click subscribe. Mm-hmm. Does that work? Yeah. Depends. Just click subscribe and just see what happens. Yeah. See you guys on the internet real soon. Cheers. <laughs>